Where do you think you fell away in the third quarter, John, and what was your message to the players in the three quarters? Uh, the message really was that I thought Carlton's intensity was over and above ours in that third quarter. Um, so they, they got the game on their terms. They won more of the footy. They got it inside 50 more. Um, basically did what we'd been doing. Um, so the challenge for the players was the game's up for grabs at three-quarter time. It's going to be the team that wants to play uh, with the, the higher intensity over the next 30 minutes that will give themselves a chance of winning. Just a word on Nick Sorround game tonight. Where'd you make it out? Uh, it was uh, an yeah, outstanding contribution to the team's performance in the ruck and, and forward and um, even as that extra mid okay. around the ball rather than just a ruckman. When he was running for that goal and the goal showed a bit of emotion there in the box. What were you yeah, no, it was, it was one of those misses we should have kicked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you think you had it there, Nick? What was the feeling like? Oh, I think I was still complaining to the umpire about being blocked in the CVD. So, um, oh yeah, it took me by surprise. But um, as we said, we did miss a few of them, and yeah, that was one of them. How pleasing is it just to get the win tonight and hold off Carlton's fight back, back top of that? Yeah, really pleasing. Um, as we just touched on, you know, our intensity was down a bit in that third quarter, and um, just to see that fight back in that last quarter by, by most of the boys. Um, you know, guys like Patrick McGinnity and and Scott Selwood stepping up at the end. Um, you know, really drives um, that intensity from everyone else, and. Um, yeah, it's good to get away with the win at the end. Wet and slippery conditions shouldn't suit the Ruckman, but you seem to, to like it quite a bit, is that? Yeah, it kind of evens it out a bit for, for myself. Um, you know, with um, those conditions, I don't mind it in the wet. Um, you know, you can follow up and, and get down there at ground level um, um, a bit quicker um, with the wet conditions, so um, no, I don't mind it when it rains. Look like uh, inaccuracy in front of goal could have been costly for a while. Was that a concern for you going three quarter time in particular? Not so much, well, yes, the inaccuracy at goal, you look at why, you know, a lot of shots uh, from a point, another long shot with, you know, basically a 16 on 16 forward line. So hard to get easy shots at goal when you're in that game, but they do come eventually. So, um, you know, we've had a few games like that this year where we're getting a lot of shots at goal, long way out because uh, teams have got all their numbers back in there. And tonight with the conditions just made it that little bit harder. But in saying that, we also probably missed four or five that uh, that weren't really under that sort of pressure and intensity, and we've got to take those. Yeah, absolutely. How significant was Scott Selwood's job on chat today? Um, significant. <laughs> yeah, I thought he played well. Um, you know, he wasn't set for a tight tag. He wasn't going to come on and off with Judd. Um, you know, we had other areas of our game that we had a stronger focus on but obviously around stoppages our our stoppage focus was certainly aware that Judd is one of the best clearance players in the competition so and Scott's ability to, to not only keep Judd to ball possession but also wrap it up himself yep no he played a good hard running game he's had a good year to date um, you know he's grown again as a footballer this year and uh yeah, he's still still a young player. Yeah. Do you have some injury concerns ahead of this week? Schofield looked like he pinged a hand. Yeah. And Shuey looked really sore. Yeah, really just, um, I think Shuey's was a stinger. I don't know what they are, but that's what I hear people talk about. <laughs> um, so he'll be fine, and Schofield will, I would expect, miss um, the next game at least with a hamstring. Did but everyone get, else is good. Did you get any early prognosis? We will on how serious it was. He looked to pull up pretty short. Yeah, he did. Yeah, so I think there's not too much doubt that he's strained his hamstring. It's a matter of what extent. So scans give you some idea, but then clinically it depends on what he can do. You know, by uh, the Monday or Wednesday post the Collingwood game, we'll see where he's at. The late change with Butler going out is there any issue there? Yeah, Butler's hamstring just tightened up at training on Monday. Uh, I'm trying to work out what day we're on, but. Um, yeah, and then on Wednesday, he got through training, felt as though uh, he could probably play, but uh, it was the same hamstring that was tight after the Fremantle game and it, because it got tight within that game. Um, he felt as though it would tighten up or it would get sore during the game and he didn't really know how long he would be able to play for, so no risk. Collingwood are um, obviously still a very one of the top sides going around, so... Uh, a challenge that we look forward to matching up against them. Do you use a game like that though to measure where you're at? To see if well, something in your game you change, right? yeah, every week you measure where you're at. Um, every week a team comes to challenge what you want to do. Um, 
But uh, yeah, if you're playing a uh, a top of the table clash is different to um, top team versus say bottom team, you still get challenged. But uh, there, there usually is a, a bigger margin in terms of potentially the, the talent of the teams at that given time. So um, getting to this point of the year and playing against a, a very good team that's now playing very good footy after um, a slow build up is uh, something we look forward to. What about the confidence you could gain by claiming a skill? Like that over there. Well, we're pretty confident with what we're doing. No, we don't necessarily think we need a win like that to say we're going to get confidence. But the one thing I can guarantee you is uh, it's a game that we'll learn from, um, learn through a win or learn through a close game, whatever it may be. Um, playing against the best teams is where we all can um, get better. Playing in, playing on the best individuals or against the best team is an opportunity to, to improve and grow. Given that you kicked three fourteen, I think between the first quarter and three quarter time, and Jack Darling was able to take those two opportunities to present themselves to him, how significant is that for, for a young forward at a big moment in a, in a big game? Oh yeah, he's done it a couple of times. I think he did it against Hawthorne too in similar conditions, slippery, not not as wet. Um, kicked two last quarter goals in that game when we only kicked five for the game. So. Um, yeah, he's an outstanding young player you know, with uh, with improvement to come. Um, you know, just for us, as much excitement out of his run-down tackle in that third quarter. And they were lining up to have another shot at goal, and he came from the half-forward line to lay a big tackle and turn the ball over for us.